If you've been following international affairs or the news, you probably know about two recent changes in Turkey. Firstly, it's now called Turkiya for some reason, rather than Turkey. And the second, the lira is collapsing again. Again, huh? Well, yes, Turkey is no stranger to hyperinflation, but only a couple of years back, anyone could have expressed great satisfaction over the country's economic growth and expected it to outshine both the East and the West, the two segments it bridges so elegantly in its history, culture, geography, and economy. But by the looks of it, that's not where things are headed now. First things first, we are going to use the name Turkey for convenience. No other reason. Now, why are basic commodities becoming increasingly expensive in Turkey. And since the situation is reversible, more on that later, why isn't Turkey solving the issue? These are some of the questions we aim to address in this video. Want to make sense of the topsy-turvy economic state of Turkey? We'll be discussing just that. Stick with us till the end so you don't miss anything. There's lots and lots for you to learn. I cover all things business and finance, so if you enjoy those things, consider subscribing or liking my video. I spend lots of time researching these stories and only a small percentage of my viewers are subscribed. It's free and you can always change your mind. Now, back to the topic. Why does Turkey's collapsing economy come as such a surprise? Between 2000 and 2010, Turkey witnessed a promising economic boom, bringing it to the forefront of emerging global economies. The country remains a popular tourist destination though, but in the backdrop of the current situation, that may change. Has Turkey finally come to face the expenses of rapid economic growth? Well, considering that it is the 11th biggest global economy when buying power is factored in, that does not seem to be the reason. Instead, mismanagement and poor policy decisions are to blame, and Turkey is now paying the price. As I said earlier, Turkey is no stranger to these economic troubles. The country's leadership took on massive debts back in the 70s to fuel massive economic growth in hopes of becoming an export powerhouse in the coming years. By the look of it, the idea seemed practical. Turkey could have been a big economic player and paid off all its debts, but one small deal detail complicated all of this. The debts were all taken in foreign currencies and had to be paid out in the same. But as the decade came to an end, the spike in global oil costs began haunting Turkey, which is a net importer of fossil fuels. The country only had one option to meet the economic challenges it was faced with, devaluing its currency. But this created another problem. Remember how I said that the debt was accrued in foreign currency? Well, yeah, that was the trouble. As the Turkish lira lost its worth, it became increasingly harder to repay the debt. This consequently led to the country's first economic recession in the 80s and 90s. In this period, the inflation rates spiked by as much as 140. But between 2000 and 2010, things started to become hopeful again, as the central bank became autonomous and borrowed solely from investors, meaning that inflation was no longer to be used as a coping mechanism. Turkey was not going to defect on the bank. By jacking up the interest rates, the bank encouraged investments in the country, leading to the springing up of businesses throughout Turkey. This was followed by the introduction of a new lira, which replaced the old one at a rate of 1 versus 1 million. Yes, there was such a thing as a 1 million lira note. That's how bad things had gotten. But now a new era had emerged. Turkey had shed its past and the economic boom that followed led the country to a new age of prosperity. This era saw the rise of Erdogan. Hate him or like him, you have heard of him. Turkey's iconic leader who has been the face of the nation for decades now. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has been president since 2014 and the nation's prime minister from 2003 to 2014. He does not seem worried about the plummeting worth of the lira, but for an average citizen, the day-to-day -day rising prices of basic commodities is worrisome. The president has pushed for an economic war of independence. As he likes to put it, and ordinary Turks are paying the price in the form of spiraling inflation. Most would call it hyperinflation, and the common denominator is interest. Erdogan wants none of it. Erdogan's unorthodox economic approach of keeping interest rates low is the causative factor of this hyperinflation. As any number of economic experts would say, the perfect remedy of inflation is to jack up interest rates, as the central bank did in the previous decade to stabilize the lira, as I just explained. So why not simply fix the interest rate and stabilize prices and the lira's value once again? Well. 
the president does not want to. Yep, no other reason. He calls it an evil that makes the rich richer and the poor poorer. His goal is to boost Turkey's economic growth and maximize its export potential with a competitive currency. By the end of 2021, the annual inflation had hit 36%. Despite this, the central bank slashed interest rates repeatedly, bringing it down to 15%. And as of now, the interest rate has dipped once again. It's at 14% at the moment. Compared to 36% by the close of 2021, the annual inflation rate in Turkey has reached a record high of 48.7%. It has never been as high in the past two decades. The lira fell in its value against the dollar by 45% in 2021 and the collapse is ongoing. For the average citizen, this is a nightmare. Prices are soaring to new heights every single day and I'm not exaggerating, this is exactly how it is. On top of this, the 22% youth unemployment rate is worrying Turkish youths. Despite all of this, Erdogan has given reassurances almost constantly throughout this period, stating that the ordeals are temporary and that his government will be able to ease the pain for ordinary Turks. Is that even possible? Well, honestly, we don't know. His model of economic reforms has never been in practice before, so it is near impossible to predict the results. This, however, does not seem to bother Erdogan and goes to show that he is willing to go to any length to pursue his economic goals, no matter what the price. The past success of Erdogan's party was mostly fueled by the volumes of foreign funds siphoned into Turkey following the 2008 financial crisis. Also, the government favored the construction industry with its spending and lending, making the country more or less dependent on imports, and its economy was left at the mercy of fluctuations of currency values. As of yet, the future is uncertain in the long term, but Erdogan's new way forward may be an overambitious jump that may spiral Turkey back into the abyss it has only just emerged from recently. And it becomes all the sadder when one sees that all of this is preventable. Drop inflation down in the comments section and I'll give it a heart. Do you agree with Erdogan's model of economic growth? And what are your predictions about the outcome? Let us know in the comments. If you learned something new about Turkey's economic situation, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be the first to see our new videos. We make deep dives like this every week where we uncover the secrets of money and business. Until next time, ciao.